Hi, I'm Trash, and so are you. Do you think that's too much? Can I say that? Hi, I'm Trash, and I'm a senior software engineer at Netflix. And today I'm gonna to be talking about making type safe APIs easy with TRPC. So before we dig in, let's address a few things. First, it's no secret that thanks to API routes, building full stack applications is, you know, easier than ever. We can all proudly call ourselves full stack developers. Wow. But in all seriousness, API routes are amazing. Second, API routes allow us to build very fast, but with great speed comes great responsibility. When interfacing with the APIs, it's really easy to make, you know, silly mistakes. Take a look at this URL. Do you really expect me to memorize any of that? Not a chance. But seriously, this is where types come in. They keep you on guardrails and gives you that auto completion capability that saves you from silly mistakes. So the idea of type safe APIs isn't really new and has some solutions that exist today. For example, GraphQL CoGen, uh, CoGen with OpenAPI. But if you listen closely, the word that I'm kind of repeating here is the word CoGen. And what this means in the examples that I just mentioned is that it's effectively a build step that generates types based off of your GraphQL schema or your OpenAPI spec. And to be honest, these solutions are pretty good. I actually use GraphQL code at work and it does its job fairly well. What if there's a better life waiting for us out there? What if we didn't have to do this code generation step? And that's why I'm going to talk to you today about the power of TRPC. And TRPC is a library that allows you to build fully type safe APIs without any schema or code generation. Enough talk. Let's uh, let's jump into a code demo so I can actually just show you. All right. So I'm going to be demoing a Next.js application leveraging TRPC. Vim, by the way, if you guys didn't notice that. All right. So let's go ahead and open up this application. Um, it's really not much going on here. I think we have like, I don't know, let's see, one, two, three, four files. And what I really want to display here is just how easy it is to set up TRPC in your next application and then the value you actually get out of it. Because I think it's pretty mind blowing, to be honest. All right, so let's jump into the Instagram file here. Um, nothing should look out of the ordinary here. It's a very simple file. The only thing that's going to look brand new here is going to be this with TRPC hawk that's wrapping my app, because that's coming from this TRPC object. Um, if we go into here, this TRPC object is really where we're going to do the configuration for TRPC. And all this is, is just a simple object that has a config callback in it. And in this config callback is where we're going to find our, our configuration that we want. For this example, we have a really bare bones one. Uh, so here, we just define um, a links property here, and inside our links, we're defining an HTTP batch link. Um, if you're wondering what batching is, it's effectively just taking multiple queries and grouping them into one request. You don't have to do this, but I personally think this, this is a great thing to use, so I'm just using it for this example. Let's go ahead and see how we can set up the TRPC server. So we're gonna go ahead and go into the API route of TRPC here, and this is where we're gonna initialize everything. Um, so down here, we can see that we just initialized trpc with init trpc.create, pretty straightforward. So here is where it gets a little bit more interesting. We're actually going to define our app router right here. And within our app router, we're going to define a procedure. And procedures can be viewed much like REST endpoints. So here we're going to make a greetings procedure or rather a query. And this kind of maps to something like this, API slash trpc slash greetings, right? So with that mental model going forward, let's continue. Um, so with this procedure, we're going to say this is going to take an input. And this input is really just a contract that this endpoint is going to take. So greetings will uh, have a contract of an object that has a name property of type string, right? And then down here, we're going to say that it's a query. And a query is just simply an HTTP uh, GET request. And this query is going to take a resolve function here. And this resolve function is going to take the input that we defined here. So if we look at the input, we look at the types, we see that is, it's an object that has a name property of type string. And then in our resolve function, we're going to use that input um, to return something. So if we look down here, we see we use input.name, we see that name's a string, and then everything's all happy. The cool thing is we can go ahead and change this to names, and we're gonna see immediate feedback uh, that we're actually using the wrong property name thanks to TypeScript. So you're probably asking yourself right now, but Trash, this is just TypeScript stuff. How does this even matter for the front end? Well, hold on, we're gonna get to that. Let's go ahead and keep pushing forward a little bit because we're almost there. So this next part here is just where we export our API handler. Um, and inside here, we just define our router. It's just gonna be our app router, which is defined above. Uh, and then we have this create context function. And we're not gonna dive too deep into what this is, but at a high level is just a function that runs every time a request comes in. And you can kind of just think of it as your bag of goodies that you can store in here, or rather contextual information that's going to be available to all your resolve functions downstream. So something like this. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and address what I forgot about. Um, so how does the magic happen? Or rather, how does the type magic happen on the client? So this type router here, um, you notice that we're exporting it. So what I forgot about was how we actually consume that on the front end. And this is where we uh, do it in, on the client here. So back in our configuration file, where we were talking about the config callback, we actually are going to throw that app router type right here. And we're gonna feed that to create TRPC next. And this is where we're gonna be able to get all the type magic from our backend to our client. All right, so let's see TRPC in action. So we're gonna to go to our page index file here. And what this file here is representing is this page BC right here on the left-hand side. So let's go ahead and dive in and see how we're actually displaying this. Um, so we actually have this resolve variable here that's consuming something from TRPC. And I'm gonna go ahead and just delete all this right now so we can kind of just walk through it. Um, TRPC is really just that TRPC um, variable that we're exporting that in our configuration file that we were looking at. And if we appeared, we're gonna see some auto completion options here. Um, we're gonna check, or we're going to select greeting. That's gonna be the greeting router that we defined in our API route. We'll hit period, and then we're gonna be presented with this method called use query. Um, so it's, I should note that TRPC is supplying a thin wrapper around the React Query library. Um, if you haven't heard of React Query, React Query is an awesome data fetching library that I believe is probably one of the hands down most, I don't know, most awesome libraries that you could ask for in the React ecosystem. So shout out Tanner and his team for getting that out there. That's kind of where this use query is coming from. So if we go ahead and invoke this, we're gonna actually see some help from LSP and it's gonna say, look, it takes an input um, that has a name property of type string. So we'll go ahead and define this object here. We'll go ahead and put name um, and we're just gonna put something in here. We'll put client again. Um, actually, just to make sure this is working, let's go ahead and change it to trash. Cool. So we actually see trash being relayed over here or displayed over here. All right, now that we've verified everything's working correctly, let's go ahead and uh, see how TypeScript keeps us in check. Uh, so we know that our greeting contract, it requires a name property. So we'll go ahead and change this to names. And we'll immediately see feedback that it doesn't recognize what names is. It's basically going to tell us that it only, it only recognizes or it's expecting something of names. So if I remove the S, we see everything's back, right? We see this, this is broken. We also know names has to be of type string. So if I change this to 100 um, and I put this back to name, we're going to see, oh, okay, well, name's supposed to be string and we're going to get the error saying, hey, number is not assignable to type string. And immediately you can just see the power of TypeScript here keeping, up, keeping us in line here. Super, super awesome, very, very helpful. And the feedback is just super fast. All right, additionally, we're gonna get a typed result back. So if we actually look at the result.data right here, if we look at this data object, we're actually gonna see that it has a text property, right? Because if we looked at our API route, if you can see here in our resolver, we actually have a text property. So we're actually seeing that type being inferred on the client. So as you can imagine, you get that sweet, sweet autocomplete. So if you have result.data, and then all your available fields that text. So you can see that the payload is fully typed as well on the client. Okay, another thing I wanna highlight is being able to just navigate from your client to your server code very easily. So we see this TRPC greeting, I can just go to definition here and it's actually gonna take me to the server implementation of this. This is insane, right? So if I go back to server implementation and say, say I wanna refactor something, so I'll refactor this to greetings and I'll go ahead and rename that to greetings. If I go back to my file, it's going to automatically refactor that in my client code. I don't know. I think, I think this is mind blowing. The DX here is just, I'm at a loss for words to be honest. It's, it's great. And if you thought I was done, I have one more thing I wanna show you. Sorry, this is it, I promise. It's just so great. There's just so many cool things I could show you. But last, let's talk about server-side rendering. So if we go back to the config here where I'm at now, we have this commented out configuration. We see SSR true. So by default, it's false. So if I uncommented it, come. <laughs> If I uncomment it, we have SSR true. Let's go back here. I'm gonna go ahead and disable JavaScript, all right? Let me just adjust that and let me refresh the page. We see here that this page is now server-side rendered, right? And just to show you that I'm not, you know, pulling smoke and mirrors, we'll make this false again and we'll refresh the page. And now we see that it's loading because we're not server-side rendering it. What? That's crazy. I don't know. See how easy that was? All right, you made it through the live coding demo and you're still awake. Congratulations. So now that I'm done preaching TRPC, the last thing I want to do is leave you with the thought that TRPC is your hammer and everything's a nail. 
So I kind of want to go for when you should use it or rather when is it potentially a good idea to use it and then when is it not a great idea to use it. Uh, so first let's talk about when it's potentially a good choice. Uh, one obvious choice is when you're using TypeScript on both your front end and your back end, right? Because as you could tell from the demo, TRPC relies on TypeScript. Or if your app's already using traditional, you know, endpoints such as REST endpoints. Uh, also, if you're in a mono repo already, it makes sharing those types a lot easier. But also if you're like an early stage startup or you're a very fast moving team, if you don't want the overhead of maintaining a schema or anything, I think TRPC is a Great choice. So when is TRPC maybe not a great idea? Um, one, your team's already bought into GraphQL. Or if your organization prefers your backend teams and your front end teams to be siloed, I personally think GraphQL is a great solution for that specific situation. And then also if your backend or front end use different languages, right? Because like we said before, TRPC relies on TypeScript. So if your backend's in Java or Go or what have you, TRPC will not be able to help you there, obviously. All right, this is it. Um, I think I'm done talking. Honestly, I am tired of talking. But before I go, I wanna take advantage of this platform that I'm able to speak to you now on and give credit where credit's due. This presentation, this library is not because of me, obviously. I, I stand here on the shoulders of giants and I wanna give credit where credit's due um, because it's fully deserved. So without further ado, let's just do some quick introductions here. First, we have Alex, he is the creator of TRPCIO. Please give him a follow, awesome guy. We have Sassy Sachin, that's what we like to call him. He is also part of the TRPC core team. Please give him a follow, this, this kid is, is a prodigy. He is the future of open source and I'm excited to see where he goes. Um, we have Julius, who is a recent active contributor to TRPC, another young, bright mind in the open source community. He, he's also an active contributor to Create T3 app. Check that out. It's a really cool tool to get you up and running with TRPC really fast. We have James here. James is awesome. Super smart guy. He's working on TRPC uh, Open API. So if that's something that interests you, please check it out. We have Ahmed here, who is the monorepo lord as I like to call him, please give him a follow. And he's actually the one that made my Vim config. So if you liked my, my sweet looking editor, go check out the config you made. And then last but not least, me, Trash Dev. Please give me a follow if you enjoyed this talk. If you enjoy just sarcastic humor, um, that's me. I'm your guy. This was truly a great honor. Um, I had so much fun making this. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. I tried to make it as entertaining as I could, but also very educational. So hopefully hopefully you thought the same. Um, again, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, it's not taken lightly. See ya.